The Chinese have a good saying. Tell me and I'll remember for the hour. Show me and I'll remember for a day. But let me do it and I'll remember forever. Now training within the construction industry is no different. We tend to be told things within the hour or the day and then we can't remember. Some sage advice. So if we are going to let a team do it, then maybe they're going to do it badly. At first, maybe. And especially if they're using this new technology and new digital processes. And they're going to make mistakes, or even worse. And then what's going to happen, they're going to go back into this autopilot mode. And autopilot mode is the routine where you feel comfortable with your old ways of working and the fear of instant change. But we'll cover that in another rule throughout the series. Today's rule is about letting the team know about the value of digital engineering. Now, many companies proclaim that their employees are their greatest assets. However, very few invest in the training of their employees that they are their assets. Remember, we know that engaged employees who feel this deep connection with the company can become the human representative of your brand. So then why do so many company executives make the mistake of not investing in their employees' soft skills to make sure that they then can contribute as a leader to the delivery of an improved team management? As a quantity surveyor, I can relate to the difficulty of taking on, let's say, a highly experienced estimator who insists that he does all his quantity takeoff using traditional methods. And then he takes out his colored box of pencils and he starts coloring on the walls and the floors on the plan. That's a brain drain exercise. Well, it used to be. And then I witnessed this huge concern, knowing that he's going to give me the results, but it's going to take a lot more time, for which I'm going to have to pay him for that. And that also means that there is no digital engineering value to the rest of the team. And the consequences of this can only be felt way further down the line within the project. Now, I'm not saying the estimator and his colored pencils is wrong. It's a little bit archaic. But I was a quantity surveyor for almost 14 years, and I made my fair share of mistakes with and without the technology in hand. And I did that same process. But now with digital engineering technologies, it allows us to move forward and become more efficient and possibly allow us to share information better or easier when considering the fact that we can now exchange data between other project stakeholders on the project. These digital models also allow designers to now collaborate between other consultants on the projects. And while they're doing this, they're gathering information as well as data for numerous other tasks that they may not be involved with later down the line within the project or even within to the operational stage and facilities management. Taking those same models that the designers are working on, we can now share them with asset management teams, and they can refer that to now as the digital twin. In my previous rule, we discussed the importance of classification standards and levels of development. Without these two factors, there's very little use for a digital twin. Remember, architecture is not just about the modern design and the aesthetics of a structure. But more importantly, it's about chalking out the functional purpose of it. And the, as the cliche goes, change is the only constant. And it's the same goes for the domain for architecture. Remember, it's important to have a blended team of traditional as well as advanced designers. Again, change towards a digital engineering constant is absolutely essential for every stakeholder within this industry. And it's important to note that there's still a large group of BIM adopters, as well as designers out there, who think that BIM is still only design software. And they persist largely with the output of conventional 2D drawings to the rest of the project team. And this unfortunately creates this divide between digital CAD, digital engineering, and digital twins. Our rule this week, is with Nathan Doughty from ASAT, who will touch on the digital engineering technologies at the forefront of our industry. And why is all this hype about this emerging technology so richly deserved to our industry? Good morning, everybody. I'm Nathan Doughty, CEO of ASAT. 
I'm, I'm here to talk to you this morning about uh, engineering digital twins for a vibrant society. So um, a little background about me. I, I've been with ASITE uh, for nearly 20 years. I was the um, original founding CTO, so the guy who started building the platform at ASITE. I've worn quite a few different hats over the years and uh, within, the, within the group and, and most recently CEO. Prior to ASITE, I was um, also in construction technology. Um, my, my, uh, my background to get to that point was um, basically a, a typical American dilettante style of, of education, doing a little bit of everything, studying computer science, architecture, urban planning, and then finally getting a degree in English literature. <laughs> so um, a non-traditional um, background perhaps, but one that I feel has um, helped me to have a, a pr broader perspective on, on what we do together as an industry. We've got a bit of a, a, a big picture um, to talk about here this morning from, from, from me, um, leaving aside uh, some of the levels of detail which are fundamental to how we all come together and collaborate to deliver a, a, you know, a better built environment. I want to talk at, at, a, at a high level about the outcomes that we can all achieve together to improve you know, our, our built environment around us and the infrastructure that underpins that uh, so that we can all you know, leverage and make better use of that to, uh, to have a more vibrant society together. And that's right the way across, across the world uh, in, you know, in every economy, um, whether it's fully developed or developing um, at every level. So digital engineering is, is a, a major um, theme for what we at ASITE and we in the broader built environment are trying to deliver. Um, but what does it actually mean? Um, I mean, fundamentally, you know, we, we know what engineering is, or there's, you know, we, we know that there are uh, a variety of different disciplines within engineering, from civil engineering to structural engineering to electrical to mechanical, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the practice of engineers in effectively designing and, and making things, if I can use that word, is well, well understood um, and ever evolving um, and, and a very professionalized um, uh, discipline uh, within, within, our, within our industry. So digital engineering quite simply is the digitization of that practice, right? So when we work to create, deliver and make these things around us, the buildings that we're in, uh, the roads that we drive on, we deliver an asset which gets operated. But what we also need in, in modern times to be focused on delivering at the same time is the digital version or, or what, we, what, we, what we call the digital twin of that asset. Stepping back from a process perspective, you know, what you're basically saying is that we're, we're now requiring of our engineering discipline not only to design this thing, but to also create the data architecture, the data that underpins it, that is the digital representation of that thing. That's quite an ask, that's a big ask, because the discipline of computer science, uh, software engineering, data science, these disciplines, um, are, you know, have heretofore been pretty much wholly di different and separate from, you know, traditional engineering. We're, tra we're talking about melding and, and blending these two things together into one, into one practice. So that's, that's a major shift in our industry um, and one that's, you know, you know, I'd say at the beginning or near the beginning and, and ongoing. This idea of digital engineering is not like a light switch that we can flip. Uh, it's not a snap your fingers, instant change. It's a journey. Um, and it's a journey that not, not one individual will take alone, but that we all as collaborators, colleagues, uh, industry peers, um, and, and project team members will take together over time. So I, I, I've highlighted uh, here in, in the presentation today um, a few key uh, areas of technological focus um, that, that we see in the industry that all, you know, all have a part to play in this journey. I'm going to talk about you know, five of those today. Um, and there's, there's, they're, they're, they're flowing kind of one into the other, um, in, in my view, in, in the, you know, uh, mirroring the life cycle or, of the built asset. 
starting with BIM, building information modeling, um, moving in to talk about advanced building materials, the things that we build with, right? Um, a little bit on modern methods of construction, um, you know, effectively the manufacturingization um, of, of the building um, trade, um, delivering smart buildings, which can be connected to the digital twin, right? I.e. The, the work product of this data science uh, approach to, to the building trade.